Hey guys, welcome back to do what you love and drop what you don't, what you don't love. So how many of you are doing what they absolutely love to do on a day to day basis? Because I get a lot of questions. That's just the nature of my job. It's the nature of what I do and it's totally fine. But 99% of those questions, I would not be asked if my audience, if you guys, actually on a day to day basis, even on a if you can master it, minute to minute basis, did what you guys loved to do. If you do what you love to do, and you drop the things you don't love to do. So much of the spiritual quest, so much of the seeking, so much of the striving, so much of the struggle, so much of the contradiction, so much of the resistance, simply would not be the case. Why? Because quite literally, you would not be resisting your own desire to create life in a certain way. So we send out one thing, we desire one thing, but then we do another, then we fight with ourselves. Whenever we desire something, we naturally imagine it and we start to attract that into our lives. But the nature of our belief system of lack and limitation and linear reality and the government and social security and all these things that we've been taught by our parents of how to live a responsible life, they also play their part in our choices, in how we act, how we move through life. And so even though we keep on the non-physical imaginative plane, keep attracting to ourselves the reality we actually desire, we keep resisting that, we keep postponing that by doing other things, by believing that we are not worthy, by believing that we can't do what we want to do, we don't have the means to, we don't have the resources to, we don't have the money to, there's not enough for everyone to go around, we have to suffer in order to achieve things, etc. So all those types of beliefs play their part. They affect our chain, our, the clarity of our free will, shall I say. It doesn't affect our free will, but it affects the clarity of our free will. And we start working opposing ourselves, resisting ourselves. So much of our day-to-day -day struggle comes from simply not doing what we love to do. So learn to follow the breadcrumb trail of excitement by dropping the things that you don't love to do. Learn to drop what you don't love to do. If something feels like a heavy responsibility, then A, it's not yours, and or B, you've defined it in an overly negative fashion and you're lingering on this point, oh, this is not working, this is not working, this is not working. So resistance can come from either definitions that are really out of alignment or are of a negative complaining type of nature, whereas you could see what you quote unquote have to do as fun as well. But even when you change that definition to as fun as you can get it, if it still does not resonate, if you still don't like what you're doing, then it's very clear that it does not resonate with you. Simply learn to drop it like it's hot. It's hot, it's in your hands, it burns, drop it. Same with a job, same with a partner, same with a business, same with a project, same with an excitement that no longer excites you, same with a hobby that is no longer your passion, same with a sport that you no longer feel comfortable with, etc. So if you don't absolutely love to do something, then don't do it. It's very important that you start to learn this habit because it's a habit. We have simply habituated ourselves into a resistance type of living where we constantly resist our own creations, our own desires. When we start to do what we love to do, when we learn to embody this principle of the breadcrumb trail more fully, and we start to act every second, every minute, every hour, every day on what excites us the most, what makes us feel alive, what makes us come into our own, what makes us feel powerful and potent and like we're creators and not beggars, not victim victims, but powerful co-creators. Whatever makes us feel powerful and co-creative and empowered is along the nature of what our higher selves desire to express through our body mind individuation. So when you do what you love to do, you're not just being selfish, you're actually listening, actually being selfless enough to take a moment to listen to your higher selves guidance, because that's how it guides us through desire, through resonance, through what feels good. So we got to learn to embrace what feels good and to simply, in a sense, avoid what does not feel good. And by avoidance, I don't mean absolute avoidance. I simply mean not 
lingering on the things that don't work, not lingering, not having our focus and our attention repeatedly confirm, oh, this is not fun. I don't want to do this. This is not working and then continue to do it. If you notice that something is not of your resonance, be swift about it, be firm about it, be concise about it, be precise about it, clear up your vibratory state, your frequencies, know that it's something you don't desire to do and respectfully and with appreciation say, thank you, but no thank you. I am going to choose this vibratory state instead and with that vibratory state comes this action that gives me joy and that I can share my joy through. So, I want you to take a close look at your life and make a list. Here's your homework. Make a list of all the things that you don't like to do, that you don't feel like doing. This list can be as long as you want to make it. I would say as a general, as a general um, guide point, let's say, I think for most people, you can, you can come up with about 20 to 50 things. So anywhere between that range would be good. Um, but at least 10 things that you really no longer want to do. And there's probably more for most of you. So that's okay. The more there is in a sense, that's fine. The better I would almost say, well, not really, but uh, at least write them down if they're there. So write down everything that you feel heavy about, that you feel requires a negative type of responsibility that does not make you thrive. A type of responsibility that feels heavy, like it weighs you down. You simply don't want to do it, but you do it because you believe you have to. Write these down. Again, make the list as long as you want to. And then make another list and you write down all the things you would love to do and keep expanding this. Expand your imagination, include things that perhaps you didn't thought of from your limited vibratory, vibratory timeline state. But now that you've shift timelines, now that you have chosen to be able to perceive more of who you truly are, because you are able to more swiftly change your vibratory state and with that your timeline reality experience. So the more you master your state of being, the more you will allow yourself to change rapidly and expand and download more intuitive information as to who you are, what your passions are about, what you can be, what you can be or are excited about. So write down a list. Again, this can also be as long as you want it to be. Of all the things that you would love to do, but perhaps don't. Also include the things that you are already doing or are doing to an extent and that you're excited about that feel really good when you do them. But also write down the things that you won't allow yourself to fully do yet, but you would love to do them. So you have these two lists. Once you've completed those two lists, you simply compare them for a little bit. Like you go back and forth, read over some of the things. And then what I want you to do is read through some of the negative things, meaning the things that you don't want to do and start, start scratching out the ones that you are comfortable with dropping right away. So some of them you feel like, oh, but they have to be done. And if they have to be done, you simply find a way to have them either be done by someone else that wants to do them or that can get paid for it or any other way that you can stop doing these things. But before you get into the specifics and into the belief systems of, oh, I can't do this, I can't just drop this, see out of that list of negative things you no longer want to do, which ones feel very easy to drop for you. And you simply scratch through them and you commit yourself to no longer doing these things. So see what feels easy and just drop them, scratch them out. Okay, great. I no longer have to do this. I'm no, no longer going to do this. I'm precise about my vibration. This simply does not excite me at all. I've been doing it for 20 years. I no longer want to do it. Someone else can do it or it doesn't need to be done. It's just an illusion that it needs to be done. I can create so much more through being excited. I waste so much time on this thing. Easy. I don't have to do this. I can safely let go of this. I want to let go of this. I'm going to let go of this scratch. So, do that with the whole list of the things you no longer want to do. And once you're done with that, there's probably bound to be a few things, a few items left on your list that you do not immediately believe you can't drop. So you've scratched out everything you feel easy about. I can drop that. And now you're left with the things that feel slightly harder. 
and we can still make two gradations in that. Let's say there are those things that you feel like, yeah, I could drop them, but in order to drop them, I need to arrange for this and that to happen first. And then there's the layer of things that you really believe, no, I can't drop this because if I drop this, all hell will break loose or I'll be lacking things, etc. So then after the first layer, which is, oh, easy, I can drop this, I'm gonna drop this, I'm done with it, done. Scratch that. Then you move on to the second layer of things that feels slightly harder, that feels like, yes, I could potentially, I know I can drop them, people have dropped them all the time in their lives and they have found ways to make that work. I simply have to arrange for a nanny or I have to ask my husband something or I have to simply deal with a belief that I have that I have to do this thing even though maybe I don't need to do this thing. And then you, this is quite an extensive workout mentally, but try to do this, try to do all of this because it will serve you tremendously. So you go through that list and you notice which things stand out as, yes, I can change them, but not immediately. I first need to do this. I first need to change my belief system. I first need to attract more money. Da, da, da. And then write each of these down, uh, like separate them out from the list just to have them on a clearly separate list and use your vibratory state changes by overwhelming that item on your list with a new type of vibratory state, meaning that you project love, lightness, and joy and lightheartedness and freedom onto these things that you're not sure you can drop. And as you do that one item at a time, be really open to what type of intuition or creativity can occur to you that shows you a way to actually safely drop this thing without it making you feel guilty or like you're out of integrity or like you can no longer support yourself and or your family, etc. So do the same as we did in a previous lesson with the timeline shifting where we took a past bad memory and we just kept exuding, we kept superimposing a vibratory state of love and joy and respect and thankfulness onto that memory and we saw the image change. Now you're going to do the same with these things on your to-do list that you feel uncertain about whether or not you can change them. And as you keep doing that with each of these activities in mind, so imagine the activity you wanna drop but you feel you can't quite drop it yet, superimpose it with a shit ton of love, a shit ton of excitement. And as you do that, as you raise your frequency with that particular activity in your imagination, suddenly be really open to either with some of the items what you'll notice is like your vibration gets so high that you're like, oh wow, I actually don't need to do these things. I can simply drop them. It is safe to drop them. It is within integrity to drop them. All I need to do, and here's the next thing, what comes in is creative ideas that you never thought of before because you defined it in a negative way. Now that you're defining it in a positive way, now that you're exuding love and, and projecting love and light onto it, what happens is that the nature of that energy vibratory state of the activity starts to change, you start to amp up and in that higher state of mind, you have access to higher types of thoughts, higher solutions, higher creativity. So first of all, some of the things will simply drop away and you'll be like, oh, I thought I had to do them, but I don't, scratch. So as soon as you feel completed with one of these items, scratch it through, um, uh, just put a stripe through it and then with certain other things, you'll notice that you gain ideas that you previously did not have access to that will help you to actually drop these things as well without making you feel like you're sacrificing your integrity or the things that you absolutely believe you need to do. Do this until ideally that whole list is um, scratched through and then move on to the toughest items, which will usually be things like quitting my job or quitting my relationship or moving to the other side of the world or things like that. Things that we have projected a lot of logistics onto. And do the same thing with this, like increase your vibration, feel so much love and excitement towards these images. As you imagine each of these items, you overwhelm your experience with joy, with confidence, with faith, with feeling connected to your higher self, with knowing everything is possible, with knowing infinite abundance can be. And you'll know that some of these things on your list that you believe you can't let go of, suddenly even of those, 
you can let go and if not then you gain at least one new idea per item that you had not thought of before then write them down act on these things to the best of your ability and as soon as you feel like you reached a state where you're absolutely confident that you're dropping it and maybe you already have dropped it you again scratch through you can return to this list later on as you might not complete everything on the first day but do try to do this because it's a very effective immediate permission slip to change your life significantly this single lesson can change your everyday physical life and how much you support yourself how much you allow yourself to feel worthy of your bliss and your desires to be made manifest which you can't do if you're occupying your entire life with things you don't want to do. So let this lesson transform your life. Let it change you. Give it a chance. Really try your best at this exercise. Now, look at your list after you've done this. Look at your list of desires. And when you look at your list of desires, after you've already raised your frequency, after you've already dropped certain things that you no longer want to do, you'll start to feel already much easier about these items on your desired list. And as you start to feel easier about these things on your desired list, when you feel absolutely confident that you can and will, and if you truly still want to, will manifest or execute that particular desire, that particular activity, you will pick up that thing you wanna do, that things that you love to do, then scratch that through as well. Or if you don't like the idea of scratching it through for this particular side of the exercise the desire exercise you can simply either circle it or put a little check mark in front of it but simply mark it as soon as per item you feel really solid about your vibratory state having changed so significantly enough that you've shifted timelines you feel like you're a different person you feel like you have a different perspective on that thing that you love to do and you feel so much more natural about it you feel so much more obvious like of course this is what i want to do this is what i'm going to do and some of the things on this list may actually disappear from you and you as you raise your frequency you realize oh this was simply to compensate for that but now that i've dropped doing this which i don't love to do this no longer really appeals to me it sort of seems like a mediocre desire there's so much more exciting things i could be getting into that's great too so be really open this is a very malleable flexible practice but give it all that you have give it the best of your ability the best of your attention the best of your devotion and dedication and keep increasing your frequency with each of these items on both sides of the list but also with the desire side and see which items of the list you don't feel comfortable uh, either striping through or putting a check mark in front of or circling those are the things that you have limiting ideas about so when you have limiting ideas about these things write down the limiting beliefs that come up as you think of the thing that you desire to do so when you think of that thing what you'll notice is a certain contraction comes up a certain negative limiting belief rooted in the idea that lack can exist or that there's a lack of something will occur will rise to the surface and you write that down and you deal with it how do you deal with it you start seeing that it's not true. You start seeing that it no longer serves you. You start understanding that that is simply a negative belief that tried to keep you safe for so long, but it's rooted in lack. It does not feel good. And because it does not feel good and you trust in your highest self's guidance, which makes you not feel good because it's not true, you remember that it's indeed not true and you don't have to hold on to it. You expand back into connection, into alignment, and you remember how worthy you are of everything you truly desire and why you are put here. You are created, you have created yourself as you have created yourself so that you can execute the things that you and your higher self truly desire to make manifest, to express here. This is your creation, my friends. This is your playground. This is your Legoland. This is your silly putty. This is your clay to play with. This is your sandbox. So feel entitled to your sandbox. Feel entitled to your creation. Feel entitled, feel empowered feel worthy of desiring how you wish for this sandbox to be experienced because it is your creation and you're here to create it according to your own desires and then go back to that point and see that more and more as you deal with those negative beliefs and put them in contrast to the love and the light of the infinite worth that you know that you are because you're inseparable from existence and you've created yourself to be a creator knowing all these things remembering the infinite abundance of creation 
you start to lighten up your frequency, you start to transform those negative beliefs into light, into love, into abundance, into positivity, into worthiness, into empowerment. And then as you return to these items on your list of the things you wanna do, you start noticing that either you've already started to do them, or now it seems easy and obvious, and of course that's what you're going to do. And then check it out and proceed and keep doing the things that you love to do in your life. So this homework is extensive. Take a few days off from engaging with these lessons if you want to. Maybe repeat this lesson once or twice more so that you really get a good sense of what is being spoken, what is being suggested, what you can do with it most importantly, and then execute the homework. Really commit yourself to this homework. It is a profound change in your life if you do so. It will significantly lighten your frequency simply by doing what I just shared that you could do. So thank you and have fun and feel free to share and ask for advice in the study group that belongs to this lesson. I love you.